Okay, and so now we're to the last element of this standard. Um, and it says, describe progressive legislative actions, including empowerment of the voter, labor laws, and the conservation movement. Um, we're only going to talk about a couple, but I am going to have you look up a few others just so that you have them. Okay. But because of the progressive era, because you have your muckrakers bringing this mud or this corruption to light, um, politicians and government leaders don't really have any other choice but to address it. I want you to think about today. Um, we've had riots. We've had, um, oh gosh, marches and protests and all kinds of things. Our government can't ignore it um, for too long. At some point, they're going to have to address the issues. Um, so let's move into this part. And what I want you to see is that during the progressive, okay, it emerged as a movement to do a couple of things. I'm just going to fix my camera a little bit, okay? Um, the first was to improve American democracy. A democracy is a government that's run by the people or, or the powers held by the people. Um, if you're not listening to the people, then it's not a democracy. It's something else. And so the progressive era gives government a chance to more closely listen to its people and really respond to its people and its societal problems. Um, the progressive era also allows us to achieve social <coughs> and economic justice. <clears throat> I've been talking too much today. Um, to more closely focus on how we're treating different groups of people and maybe to right those wrongs. And then to correct the evils of industrialization and urbanization. Um, when you have tons of people in the population flocking to um, the cities, the urban areas, it's going to get overcrowded and the cities aren't prepared for that. So the infrastructure is going to have to change to meet the demands. Okay. Um, the progressive era is made up mostly of middle class who saw it as their civic duty to participate in the government and to get government to listen to them. And a lot of times you run into portions of the population who feel it's their civic duty to help those that can't speak for themselves. A lot of times you think about it, the poor, they're incredibly poor and they're working so many hours and they just don't have the time to participate. Um, middle class people do have more time and so do the wealthy. So it falls on them to step up and do their civic duty, be good citizens, and look out for those who cannot protect themselves. Those people that lived during the progressive era who were part of this movement, they wanted to see more government regulation where the government could step in and, and take care of consumers and its people, to empower voters, to give them more of a voice, and then to protect the consumers, the workers, and the environment. Because at some point, if you destroy society, then there's nothing left to govern over, right? Well, what did voters and workers get during this time period? Well, voters got a couple of things. Um, and I didn't put these in pink, but you're going to have to go through and, and do these terms too. Okay, voters got what's called an initiative, a referendum, and recall voting. Okay, so an initiative is where voters get to suggest laws to the government. And they basically go to the government with a petition that's been signed by lots and lots of people. And every state has their like number of, of names that you need on a petition to get something on the ballot. Um, but if the voters say they want a law against something or a law to protect something, they can get that put on the ballot by the government. So that's an initiative. The voters take initiative to get something on the ballot. Um, a referendum is when the government officials or the legislative leaders put something on the ballot that they've come up with, not the people, and then the voters have to approve the law, okay? And then recall voting is where all the voters get to vote to determine whether they remove a politician from office. This is not, we don't do recall voting for the president. That's impeachment. That's different. And we talked about that last week, um, but we can talk about it again later too. Um, but we're talking about like mayors, um, state officials, and those kinds of things, okay? And then workers got new labor laws that protected their working conditions um, and their hours and things like that. Children had labor laws that restricted them from the number of hours that they could work each, each week, <coughs> what kind of jobs they could do. There was minimum wage to protect women workers, so 
you know, they weren't getting sent up the creek without a paddle and getting paid cents or pennies on the dollar. You really, when it comes to minimum wage, you want to make sure that your workers are making enough to be able to um, sustain themselves, to be independent, to be able to live, to pay for things like rent and bills and food and whatnot. Um, so minimum wage protects the workers, and it says that, that employers can't give workers less than this amount for the work that they do. Um, and they can always give them more. So if you go out and go get a job somewhere, then there's a minimum wage for you, okay? Um, the maximum number of hours somebody can work in a week um, so that you're not working your, your workers into the ground. You, you need them for later. And then work site inspection for safe working conditions. You want to make sure that... You know, like Upton Sinclair um, demonstrated, you don't want workers in the factory falling into boiling vats and being mixed up with the meat and packaged and sold to consumers. Um, you don't want children losing their hands in a, in a machine that's so dangerous that they shouldn't be working on it to begin with. Okay. And then what about the environment? So this is kind of a big deal. Um, this is the conservation. Now, during the 1870s, during the Progressive Era, <clears throat> there were three ideas related to conservation. Really, um, you know, the minimalist idea was businesses should be allowed to do whatever they wanted with the land. You know, if they bought it, they could do whatever they wanted. And the problem is, is if you destroy it, um, you may not have it for later to use for what it's needed for. Um, there's the second one, that, it, that there was this environmentalist approach. And John Muir is um, an environmentalist, and he believed that nature was sacred and that humans should make as minimal an impact on nature, um, that we should only take what's necessary, not just what we want, um, because we need to save that for generations to come. And if we leave the, the most minimal footprint, then nature will be protected and we'll have it for generations to come. And then the last idea of thought is conservationist thought. And it's that um, nature could be used responsibly and it could be protected. We could use it for factories and industry. Um, and we could use it for, um, you know, necessities and things that we wanted. But we just had to be mindful and, you know, not um, take too much. Okay. And Theodore Roosevelt is one of our presidents. And he believed in conservationist thought. He thought that we could use it responsibly. Um, but we just had to have laws in place to make sure that we didn't abuse nature, okay? He was a lifelong naturalist. Um, he increased the national reserves of forests, meaning he um, protected our forests. He also created the National Forest Service. Um, that's where you go to a national forest and you see those park rangers and they work for the national forest system um, or service. He created national parks to protect those lands so that they wouldn't be built on or have roads driven through them. He created national monuments so that we could go see those for generations to come and see our history without destroying the land. Protecting birds and, and natural habitats by creating reserves for them. Game preserves. And then our national forests. Okay. So a lot's happening during the progressive era. People are starting to realize that we're not taking care of things the way we should, be it um, people in our inner cities or workers or children workers or even nature itself. Okay. Here's a picture of Theodore Roosevelt and his distinguished party before the grizzly giant big trees of California. So this is a giant redwood tree. Um, you can't wrap your arms around a redwood tree that's fully grown. These things are massive. I mean, here's a full-grown male adult um, and all of his, um, you know, compatriots, compadres. Um, and this is just the base of the tree. You go into these forests. You can't even take pine cones. Um, it's against the law. It, it is the most amazing sight you can imagine. Um, if you go, if you ever get a chance to go see the redwood forest, go see them. You will feel so small and so minuscule. Um, I, I don't even know how to describe it. They're beautiful. It's peaceful. You just feel like, you feel like an ant. Um, you can't take rocks out of there. You can't take pine cones. You can't take pieces of bark, like nothing. Like you have got to tread lightly and carefully. Okay. 